like uh, to discuss uh, with you about the results uh, and also about possible future directions of my PhD research project, which was carried out uh, uh, from 2013 until uh, early 2018. Uh, this project is part of the larger research programs uh, titled LERC, which is based at Leiden University and the Royal Netherlands Institute in Rome and was funded by the uh, Netherlands Organization for Scientific Research. This larger project aimed to test a new conception of Roman Republican colonization using both newly collected and legacy survey data. This project targeted non-urban settlements such as vi uh, villages and hill forts to gain understanding of their societal role during the early Roman expansion in Italy. In this context, the aim of my uh, PhD was to develop a set of interrelated GIS approaches that define a precise research procedure for the use of legacy de survey data in settlement pattern analysis. The main strength of the GIS procedure presented here lies in the integrated instructions on how to single out from these empirical data, namely legacy survey data, patterns likely resulting from past settlement choices and, on the other hand, patterns that instead are a misrepresentation of such choices. The integration within the proposed procedure of approaches to assess the effect of biases turned out to be essential to correctly perform investigation on, on ancient settlement pattern. Despite the unquestionable importance of these data, they should not be used uncritically researchers in need to apply methodological procedures able to cope with their limits, and more importantly, with the distortions on data patterns caused by biasing factors such as natural erosion and deposition. These geomorphological processes can partially cover or move from their uh, original position the surface material and thus alter the overall spatial distribution of archaeological data. The present state of the spatial pattern exhibited by survey data is determined by a multitude of natural and cultural processes which occurred during and after the deposition of archaeological material. By filtering out the effect of post-depositional biasing factors, it is possible to obtain more representative patterns of ancient human behavior on which to base historical reconstructions. However, of course, achieving this goal is not an easy task and requires a solid methodology. The current study presents a possible methodology to address these specific issues. It is important to note that the GIS procedure developed in this research is devised to be widely applicable and thus may be useful to several landscape archaeology projects that deal with site-based survey datasets. Survey has been traditionally conceived as a repeatable experiment. Ideally, archaeologists could come back into the field and work it again to collect better or more data. Unfortunately, in many Mediterranean regions, this scenario has turned out to no longer be possible. Modern anthropogenic uh, transformation are endangering the soil by causing extensive soil loss in many farmed and urban areas. This situation, of course, has also a detrimental effect on the survival, identification, quality, and reliability of the archaeological material recordable nowadays at the surface level. In many places, material scatters at the surface, namely archaeological sites, have disappeared or have been dramatically damaged. For this reason, there is a growing interest for legacy survey data. Legacy survey data are data registered in the early decades of archaeological survey, quite often before the rise of massive environmental destructions triggered by, uh, triggered by anthropogenic activities such as intensive agriculture. When survey methodology was in development and has not yet reached the methodological sophistication of today's surveys and techniques. Usually, these data consist of register of archaeological sites, only roughly described, and represented as dots, points, or polygons on large-scale topo topographic maps. And this is an example. 
Despite the lack of detail that very often characterize this data, devising a method for realizing the potential of this data is extremely important, especially as recent studies have convincingly argued that the archaeological surface record is disappearing very rapidly. It is likely that legacy data will soon be the only available source of information to study past settlement dynamics for many regions. The GIS pr uh, research procedure proposed here is devised to use site-based survey datasets, and specifically legacy site-based survey datasets for regional investigation of ancient settlement patterns. It is also useful for inter-regional comparative analysis. However, there is a condition to be met in this case, namely the comparability between the datasets. As a matter of fact, a limit exists which regards the, me the methodological differences between individual surveys and the results they produce. This limit, when present, is difficult to overcome and represents an obstacle for interregional comparative analysis. A fundamental con condition to apply the GIS uh, pr procedure proposed here lies in the comparability between the datasets. The research methodology consists of two parts. One part regards the assessment of the degree of distortion char characterizing legacy data. The other part aims to extract, uh, extract historical meaning from this data. This part constitutes the problem-solving phase of the procedure. Through the application of different quantitative and qualitative approaches, it aims to shed light on the archaeological question that is posed by a, by a project. It consists of three subsequent but interrelated analytical steps. The first step is a deductive analysis in which various existing theoretical models on settlement patterns and location preferences are used as testable hypotheses. These models are, are confronted with a, uh, with a survey datasets in order to establish which one, which model, is the most probable. As a second step, a bottom-up, that is, inductive analysis, is performed to establish if unexpected patterns, which cannot be explained by the initial working hypothesis, emerge. The analysis in this case starts from the data and highlights patterns, patterns inside distributions with respect to the local environment. As a third step, the results of the deductive analysis are compared to the results of the inductive analysis. It is at this calibration stage that new insights can be gained, can be gained about the initial theoretical settlement models. To show how the proposed pr research procedure works in practice, a particular case study is considered in this PhD project. This case studies regards a landscape archaeology project that aimed to test two different settlement theories by using mainly survey data, namely the LERC project, which we have already talked about before. These two competing theories describe the impact of early Roman colonization on rural settlement patterns in central and southern Italy in a very different way. The first model envisages large colonies of people departing from Rome in the 3rd century BC to occupy wild indigenous territories through the establishment of a fortified urban, set, uh, urban center and the construction of numerous farms in regular allotted holdings in the countryside. Such an impressive reorganization of the entire landscape would have, in most cases, destroyed villages of native people that were replaced by an evenly dense distribution of farms. The second model proposes instead the presence of a dominant clustered village-based settlement system both in pre-colonial and early Roman colonial periods. My PhD research aimed at testing these two theories in three early Roman colonial landscapes, specifically the landscape of the colony of Venusia, Cosa, and Esernia, and to establish which one, which model, was more probable based on legacy survey data, and specifically on site-based legacy survey data. In order to test these, the proposed GIS procedure was developed and applied. Again, uh, survey data are intrinsically biased, and 
To propose an accurate territorial reconstruction, it is necess necessary to test whether these data are representative enough. This is precisely the goal of the bias testing step within the procedure. I will focus here only on one of the three uh, case studies I had, I had considered, uh, namely the landscape of the, of the colony of Isernia in modern Molise in, in, south, uh, in, uh, in central Italy. An unexpected large-scale cluster pattern characterized by long tracts of empty space in between localized high density of settlements were, was surprisingly attested. My aim was to statistically examine the, rel the reliability of the pattern documented in this area. And more specifically, I wanted to assess the extent to which uh, measure regional biases m might have been responsible for the recorded clustered pattern. For example, there may exist an association between favor favorable surface visibility conditions and the detection of localized high site densities. Conversely, in a, in a zone where site density is low and erosion or, de, or deposition is active or occurred recently, the lack of archaeological sites may be explained by geomorphological processes affecting the preservation of sites rather than by pa past constraints against settlements. The geoarchaeological method for assessing biases consists of three steps. First, it was analyzed by means of statistical tests whether there were associations between the number of sites discovered and physical conditions of the working uh, surface. As a result of this statistical analysis, detect a detectability map based on surface visibility conditions was produced using the multi-criteria evaluation of Idrisi GIS. Second, we analyzed soil formation processes in order to assess the risk that recent erosion and deposition phenomena could have deleted or covered up part of the archaeological surface evidence. For each of these two analyses, a detectability map was produced showing in each survey unit the probability that the registered site pattern was unreliable. Finally, the results of the previous two analyses were visualized in combination through a cross-tabulation in Idrisi GIS. And I assigned to each survey unit detectability scores which help the archaeologists to evaluate in combination the effects of these two biases. So, this method allows researchers to formally highlight critical survey zones where the recording of evidence may be incomplete or biased and thus provides a filter through which archaeologists can calibrate and re-evaluate interpretation of legacy site distribution at a large scale of an analysis. After performing several uh, tests, several bias tests, I could establish that actually there is not enough reason to assume that surface visibility conditions strongly bias the site patterns. Settlement data recorded in previous field surveys in southern Italy very likely retain representative evidence to detect significant regional patterns. At this point, we were more confident in arguing that rather than biases, real location preferences determine, determined to a considerable extent the spatial pattern we observed from survey data. First, the research questions, which model the clustered or the regular model is the most probable. This research question was first addressed deductively. The regular and village settlement models expect radically different settlement densities and patterns in point distributions representing archaeological sites. These expectancies can be easily tested through GIS point density and patterns tools. These allowed establishing that a clustered configurations instead of evenly dense uh, pattern of sites underlies the, the data sets. By applying a deductive analysis, it is concluded that the nucleated settlement theory is the most probable for early Roman colonial landscapes. To gain further understanding on the logic behind the detected settlement clustering, an inductive analysis was performed. 
This type of analysis was carried out only for the territory of the colony of Venusia, because for the other two colonial territories, the quantity or the quality of the available da data or met met metadata were insufficient to allow the type of analysis implemented here. The clustering exhibited by sur the survey data of Venusia was compared to natural and cultural factors using both qualitative and quantitative GIS analysis. These not only permitted to further test the highlighted patterns, but also provided the opportunity to assess whether there were other local correlation with, with the natural and cultural environment, which could help explain the patterns. The inductive analysis indeed permitted to establish that the colonial period site clustering seems to favor only certain zones within the landscape. More specifically, the clustering seems to strategically favor zones only scarcely settled in the previous period. The impression is that the pre-existing territorial organization of the pre-Roman settlement system determined significantly the choice of the area where the Roman colony was established. The most influencing factors in early colonial period settlement strategies are therefore not to be sought in favorable conditions of the natural environment, but rather in cultural constraints. The newly developing settlement organization in the mid-republican period complemented rather than replaced the existing territorial organization by adaptively filling in the, the relatively scarcely, scarcely settled portion of the landscape corresponding to the marginal zones at the borders of the catchment areas of pre-Roman nucle nucleated settlements. As a last step, the comparison between the results from the deductive and inductive analysis showed that the impact of Roman colonization on newly conquered areas of southern Italy may not have been as harsh as usually imagined. However, this does not mean that it was not strategic. On the contrary, the colonial period site clustering displayed in survey site distribution maps, whether representing villages or other types of settlement agglomerations, grew organically and complemented rather than replaced the pre-colonial settlement system. An organic rural infill over time is documented in which cultural factors such as the existing settlement organization or the vicinity to the city center instead of land use potential played a key role in colonial settlement organization. By using this case study, I have therefore assessed that it is indeed possible to produce useful results through the application of the proposed GIS procedure, especially in the case of problem-oriented regional investigation of settlement patterns. This GIS procedure indeed has, uh, um, has cast new light into revisited materials, in this case, legacy survey data collected in three Italian territories by previous survey projects. As regards the case study itself, the main conclusion I reached using this GIS procedure is that from patterns in survey sites, it is of course not possible to infer whether people living in third century nucleated rural settlements were of Roman or native origin. What can be argued, however, is that they adopted a settlement strategy that radically differed from conventional predictions regarding the organization of colonial landscapes. And thank you for your attention.